Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys another really popular druid spec, although this one takes off a lot later into the game, has a lot more requirements. However, when it comes to pushing your nightmare dungeons, I would say that it excels a lot more than the pulverized grizzly. Now, before we get started, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just flash some of my gear. So if you guys want to go in slow motion, you can go ahead and look at it. Uh, I'll talk more about the gear after the dungeon. Um, and just know that, again, there are a lot of requirements to getting this build feeling good. Whereas Grizzly with Pulverize, if you don't have enough damage, you can hit more. Uh, it innately gets more damage reduction. It just feels better with worse gear. This build is a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a pretty high uh, tier 50 right now. I'm still optimizing this character. Another thing I'd like to state is this build is not like min-maxed. I just recently respect into it. But, you know, due to the demand of people really wanting to try things that's not pulverized, which I completely understand, uh, I decided to just, you know, make a video kind of covering my thoughts on it, right? So, uh, some of the pros of this versus uh, the pulverized setup. The single target damage is more than 30 times higher, like no kidding. Um, one of the issues with pulverize I see is a lot of people go very hard into CC damage. So bonus damage to targets that are crowd controlled, critical damage to targets that are crowd controlled. All of this is really good. It helps you clear a lot faster, but then you hit a big problem of you fight the map boss and you can't CC it. So you're losing out on all of those modifiers. This build does not really have that issue. This build's issue is more of just acquiring all the pieces and getting used to the play style. All right, so to talk about our skills, this is a tornado build. So primarily we will be clearing with tornado and the entire key is going to be our grizzly rage. Now I'm still pretty far off on maintaining permanent uptime on grizzly. So you will see some downtime here and this will be kind of comparable to what it would be like if you're not fully set up with the character, right? The other thing to note is that our left click is actually kind of important. So we use Storm Strike. It's not really needed for generating, but it generates, it basically gives us damage reduction, and that is what is important. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna Grizzly up, the mobs are level 104. We're gonna pop our Hurricane to basically slow and reduce the damage, but also it helps us generate some lucky hit procs. Now, this character also runs, um, I don't know what it's called in D4. In PoE terms, we have permanent phasing. Uh, what phasing is, is basically we literally walk through the monsters as long as we have unstoppable. So what that also means is this build basically has close to 100% uptime on crowd control immunity. It will be like 95% when you set everything up. So Grizzly Rage up, Hurricane. Anytime you see yellow numbers vomiting all over the screen, it's because we procced Earth and Might. Earth and Might, as you guys remember from my Grizzly videos, basically means... Did I just get bugged? Oh, there we go. Earth and Might, if you guys remember from the Grizzly videos, basically means every single hit crits during that duration, and we get all of our spirit back. So, kind of the same concept of the Grizzly that we played, just kind of with tornadoes instead of Pulverize. drop this off grizzly up and go now another thing on why i say this is harder to set up it's gated behind finding a unique item whereas grizzly can be played without a unique item unique items are a tier above legendary quite more rare um, and just in general because of the way diablo 4 works you cannot really target farm these items you simply just play a lot until they drop you can run content that is maybe more likely to drop stuff like higher tier nightmares you know, doing hell tides, but ultimately it's gated by how much you play and how efficient you are when grinding. I don't know why I can't kill these guys. I think there's like, oh, there's a champ hiding somewhere in here. I hate the champion mobs. The build can be a little frustrating to play as well because your tornado is really Popega. And even though you have homing tornado, homing tornado hits like even breakable objects. Like it'll like home in on a barrel instead of like, you know, this hell caller shaman, for example. Rude. Okay, we're going over here. Wait, that's weird. I hit my grizzly form, but I'm a human. Huh? Huh? 
weird. This build also can hit movement speed cap relatively easily. Uh, movement speed cap in D4 is one or 200%. So hitting 200% is not difficult at all because there are nodes on our passive tree that give us movement speed while in werewolf form. Then our grizzly werewolf form actually gives us movement speed as well, which actually means you get to sacrifice an affix on your amulet so you don't have to get movement speed there, which I think is actually better. I currently have movement speed on my amulet, but there are much better stats I could get instead. the champ mobs now something else as well there is a unique uh, body armor for this build similar to the grizzly one where you get to have a hundred percent uptime on your wolf form I actually don't think that's very good for this build, and here's why. This build doesn't really struggle with damage. We can always scale more damage with other pieces, especially because we're basically, you know, utilizing our Grizzly Rage to scale crazy amounts of Critical Strike Multiplier. Um, we don't really need the damage on the chest piece. What we do need, however, is as much survivability and damage reduction as we can get. So here's an example. My Grizzly Rage fell off, right? I'm just going to wait a little, and it's back up. So we are good to go. Yeah, I still don't have all the pieces that I would like since we have dropped over to this yesterday night. We've been in pulverized setup pretty much the whole time. Oh, this is going to be kind of scary. Yo, these champ mobs are so annoying with the uh, tornado. I can't, like, I can't get them to hit. <laughs> I think it's the champ mobs because they're getting insane DR. So there's definitely like a hidden champion in there that I just cannot target. Because you can see the tornadoes actually shred once they're actually hitting the target. This is like a really poopy map to run. Alright, there's our nightmare clear. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna go through some pain here and try to fight these. Okay, cool. The purple glowing mobs? Yeah, it's just difficult to fight them when they're like overlapping because it looks like with the suppressor, right? Like there's like the suppressor mob and then there's the purple glow and those are two different things, right? But when they're on top of each other, it's like hard for me to tell. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's talk about some gear here. So, um, Tempest Roar is one of the most, is 100% mandatory for this build. And the reason is when you are in your Grizzly Rage, which turns you into a Dire Wolf, you are able to cast your Tornado. Without this helmet, you can't cast Tornado in Grizzly Rage. It does not work, right? So, mandatory before you even start playing the build. Let's talk about some other things that make this feel much better. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about the aspects yet. I'll talk about them in just a second. I want to talk about some core important stats for the build. So I like running a little bit of spirit cost reduction. The reasoning for the spirit cost reduction is I don't know exactly like the perfect sweet spot on what you want because you are spamming your tornado. And if you ever run out of spirit, that's a massive damage loss, right? So you want to have enough spirit to kind of keep looping your tornado. But if you notice, while we're in Grizzly Rage, we have huge spirit cost reduction. Now, another thing about this is I want to actually remove this aspect that's on here and put the Grizzly aspect instead on the amulet so we get an extra three seconds of Grizzly Rage. 
To do that, we're probably going to want spirit cost reduction. Anyway though, this amulet is missing something extremely important, and that would be cooldown recovery. So I've got movement speed, spirit cost reduction, DR from enemies that are poison, and plus three to wild impulse. You don't actually have to have wild impulse. Wild impulse actually makes me use more spirit, but it's a big damage multiplier. But again, damage is not a big deal with this build. It ramps really hard. So getting cooldown recovery on your amulet, very big for Grizzly. It's also important to note that when you are running from pack to pack, or say you're playing with friends where maybe there's more downtime, cooldown recovery is even more beneficial because this build gets some form of cooldown recovery when hitting, but if you're not hitting, you're not going to get that cooldown recovery, right? When you are in Grizzly Rage, you are near max movement speed, generating base life is 4 to 5 per second, you will be phasing so you can run through everything, and you are immune to all forms of crowd control very big right so we want to really build around grizzly rage that takes me to the second part your offhand offhands can also roll cooldown recovery and the base of the offhand is cooldown recovery so what this means is you can actually hit cooldown recovery on your offhand times two and then you can get cooldown recovery on your amulet and that should be more than enough i've been told that there is diminishing returns past 30 percent cooldown recovery i have to actually jump into this and kind of figure it out a little bit but for now it's good Next topic to talk about is Critical Strike and Lucky Hit. This build functions extremely heavily on Critical Strike and Lucky Hit. I do want to say you want to prioritize it anywhere you can get it. That's going to be four pieces. Rings, Gloves, and Offhand. Rings can roll Critical Hit, Lucky Hit, uh, Critical Strike, Lucky Hit, uh, and then you can also roll um, same thing on the uh, Gloves here. So, lucky hit, critical strike, don't mind the dog. And then on your offhand, you can also roll uh, critical hit chance and lucky hit. I had a critical hit chance lucky hit, but I dropped it in favor of a little bit more cooldown recovery, and it feels a bit better for me. But ideally, I would like to get both of them. Ideally, I would not put the spirit cost reduction here. So, I would aim for something like cooldown recovery, uh, some form of damage reduction, um, critical hit chance, and lucky hit. So it's important to know that with Earth and Might, we've got Earth and Might all the way over, where is it, the uh, ability, skill tree. Earth and Might over here is what we are based around. So the critical, the, the chance to proc your Earth and Might goes up when you crit, and of course it is scaled off of the lucky hit. So this is pretty much what we are building around. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the character to understand. So Tempest Roar, again, mandatory for the build. The reason we need Tempest Roar is to actually cast the Tornadoes while you are in your wolf form. Body Armor. So I have opted out for Cyclone provides physical damage reduction to affect my party. I think a lot of people are going to run 50% um, increased armor here, which is potentially probably much better. I just haven't fully understood how armor scaling works. Uh, so I'm using this and so far I like it a lot. It works when I'm reading my chat. I lose all my stacks of uh, you know armor. With this, I maintain physical damage reduction. So I like it. I'm just keeping it for now. We're going to test out a lot of stuff. Uh, really important on your body armor, you want to get some form of life and as much damage reduction as you can primarily get. Uh, gloves. So gloves, ideally, tornado, lucky hit, critical strike, and instead of main stat, I would highly recommend attack speed. Attack speed is a direct multiplier for this build because you can infinitely channel your, or just spam your tornado. So attack speed super beats your willpower. Also makes the build feel more consistent when you are running through and just kind of tapping your tornado. Pants. Um, pants, something with life DR armor. Uh, I have done the imprinted gain damage reduction while you are shape shifted into a werewolf. Boots. Boots are another nice spot where you can get spear cost reduction. Not sure if it's mandatory here. I don't know if how, like how good of rolls you can get, uh, on damage reduction on boots. I know you can get damage reduction when injured, but this is something to, to look out for. Movement speed, spear cost reduction. The rest are kind of like flex stats. Weapon. I believe on your weapon, you're going to want something with all stats, uh, potentially willpower. All stats is just nice because it helps you hit breakpoints on your Paragon tree. The number one most important thing by far is the vulnerability damage, as that's its own multiplier. So vulnerability is your core. I would say vulnerability, all stats, and then kind of from there you want to pick whatever. What's more important as well than the all stats roll would be the item power. So you want to look for the highest item power possible because that is what derives the damage per second, which is what you scale off of. Moving on to the amulet, we talked as much as we possibly could about this one. Um, then you have rings. Rings, I try to get critical hit chance, lucky hit chance, 
vulnerability and maximum life. That, that I think would be super ideal. So something pretty much just like this. Life, critical hit chance, vulnerability, lucky hit, but ideally on an ancestral and not a um, not a sacred. Now there's also a uh, potential if you have the legendary, sorry, the unique pants called Temerity. Temerity also allows you to use your overhealing, which we do a ton of in this build, um, and allows you to put it as a barrier above your life. I don't know how they like how good they are because I have not tried them. I would imagine you're basically trading damage reduction for a bigger effective hit pool. I am not sure what ends up winning in the end. Okay, uh, spirit boons. This part is very important as well. So here I run reduce damage taken from elites since we stand point blank in everyone's face. Um, over here I am running attack speed. I don't actually know if it's better than crit chance. It's definitely not better than crit damage because I'm pretty sure crit damage is just uh actually has an x i don't know i'm always confused about how the terms work in d4 if this is a multiplier to all of your crit damage or if this is just flat 30 percent if it's a multiplier to all your crit damage i take this 100 percent um but I'm, I'm not sure i thought i tested this on the sheet and it wasn't some more testing that i'll have to do right um down over here we take extend duration of your ultimate since again all about the grizzly rage and i have favor to go with the two boons down here uh, so that we can take nature magic skills have a 10% chance to reduce the cooldown of your ult by 2 seconds. This is why lucky hit also comes into play, because lucky hit turns into a form of cooldown recovery that is not really affected too much by the diminishing returns, because cooldown recovery and lucky hit flat reducing your cooldowns are two separate things. Then, this is where majority of our sustain comes from, masochistic. Every time a, a uh, tornado crits, you're going to heal. That healing is what would generate into your temerity for your kind of like barrier. All right. Last thing to talk about, uh, I want to go ahead and go over the aspects again. So let's start from the basics. I've got cyclone armor for a form of damage reduction. Again, a lot of players are going to favor the 50% increased armor. So that's every time you hit, you get a stack of armor. I've got Earth and Might also applies to your storm skills. This makes it so that the Earth and Might, which procs, which gives you the full spirit and the critical chance, applies to your storm skills, which would be your tornado. Remember, you need the helmet to actually use the tornado in werewolf form. On my pants, I've got the damage reduction while shapeshifted. Uh, on my boots, I've got unstoppable, which is what I was talking about with phasing, how you can kind of phase through monsters. On my weapon, I have imprinted uh, grizzly duration. I want to put the Grizzly Duration up on the Amulet instead and move Grizzly Rage down to the weapon. All you have to do is be able to manage the spirit up of the spirit cost, but three seconds of Grizzly Rage I think is much better. On my offhand, I have critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed. Attack speed is another form of damage multiplier for the build because we can infinitely spam tornado. Uh, over here I have tornado seek three targets. Truly, I have no clue how this works. I really could not tell you. Um yeah, uh, over here we've got core skills deal increased damage based on the amount of fortify we have. We generate fortify via our Grizzly Rage, so CDR also allows us to get more forms of fortify, or not more forms, but more consistent fortify. Then, uh, the last one would be the Grizzly Rage one here I was talking about where I would like to shift these. Now, the last one would be the skill tree, and the Paragon I will slightly talk about, but I will put it in the builder and then you guys can kind of look through that. So, Stormstrike, two points to generate, essentially, first off, you have to do this to even unlock here, but this is basically used for damage reduction. Thor, can you chill out, buddy? All right, over here, uh, we've got Tornado, as many points as we can dump, so that's five, and then it scales off plus the level. Tornado uh, has a chance to spawn two, so direct damage multiplier, and then vulnerability. I tried out using slow, but then you don't have as consistent, like, uptime on your vuln so i ended up dropping it um so that doesn't really i didn't really like that um give me one quick second hold victoria to go grab the doggy all right so over here i've got maximum spirit i also just realized i don't need three points in this so we actually get two points back um okay so then this over here, Wild Impulses, is the passive I have that's making everything, my core skills cost more spirit, but deal more damage. So that is pretty, pretty big, right? There are other passives you can get on Amulet. Like I think there's one down here. Oh, actually that's Earth skills. So just kidding, Wild Impulses is pretty good. Okay, 
Down over here, we've got critical strike chance against close enemies since we kind of stand melee in front of everybody, right? And then movement speed. Uh, since we are pretty much in permanent wolf form because anything we press puts us into wolf form, uh, this is just another 9% movement speed whenever we're actually in combat. Over here, we've got Cyclone Armor. Now, I have opted out to put 5 points into it because I'm using the passive, which makes it so it also gives me uh, physical damage reduction along with affecting the whole party. Uh, from here, I have went up to go to do every 10 seconds, Cyclone Armor intensifies, causing incoming damage to grant you 30% damage reduction. Um, yeah, I don't really need the vulnerability because now we have consistent vulnerability. I've went into Blood Howl, um, kills reduce the cooldown. Actually, I wanted to get the attack speed, I just didn't have the points. There we go. Now, Blood Howl and Cyclone Armor are both defensive skills. So while you're while you're zipping through content, you're kind of going to be tapping Blood Howl because it gives you the attack speed trigger, right? And every time you kill mobs, it's going to reduce the cooldown. Then over here with Vigilance, whenever you pop your Cyclone Armor or your Blood Howl, you're actually even going to get another form of damage reduction, which is nice. And then this just gives us res. I don't know how impactful this is, but I imagine it's not bad to have, right? Um, nothing really to get on companions. This doesn't really matter. I was using Nature's Reach for distant damage, but realistically, you're just going to stand on top of a tough target and cyclone it anyway, so I ended up dropping this. <clears throat> Moving forward, I've got Elemental Exposure for another form of vulnerability to help keep up the consistency of vulnerability. I have opted out to not really get anything here. Hurricane Duration is not bad because Hurricane Duration is going to have better uptime on Hurricane Deal's... Um, Enemies affected by Hurricane take, take uh, sorry, deal less damage. There we go. Down here, we've got Neurotoxin 1 point into Toxic Claws, which basically, whatever Toxic Claws procs are on your crit, they're poison, and because they're poison, you actually get to affect, or uh, you get to benefit from anything poison related, which is really, really awesome. Moving down a little bit more, we've got Defiance, uh, Nature Magic skills, so that would be Storm. Uh, deals increased damage to elites. Elites counts as bosses. Elites also counts as uh, enemy players. And then I've got Nature Magic that consumes spirit, heals you for 2%. Don't need this at all. This is complete flex. I'll figure out what to do with these two points. I feel like I always have a little bit of points to kind of pick and choose where I want to go. <clears throat> Down here, we've got Grizzly Rage. There's only one way you can really go into your Grizzly Rage. And then over here, I've got Earth and Might, which is how the whole build kind of works, right? All right, last thing to do would be talk about the Paragon. I'm just going to do a quick glance on the Paragon. Uh, this is by far the part that I definitely have fleshed out the least amount since we just recently respect. So over here, I've got the Vulnerability cliff, uh, Glyph. The main reason is the first tap of your Tornado immediately vulns, and then you can keep uptime on the Vulnerability with the Tornado passive and then the, the passive for uh, Storm Skills Vuln as well. Moving up forward... We go into Lust for Carnage, which helps massively sustain your spirit in case you get unlucky procs. So this is super good. I don't actually know if it's mandatory to use later, but I feel like it, it probably is. So we've got this for sure. <clears throat> Moving up more over here, I've got my Glyph Socket for damage while fortified. Probably not mandatory. It's just I, I have this because I was on my Grizzly and it's a really high level one. So I will look at other Glyphs to replace this with. But I feel like glyphs are not really a very difficult part of, of, like, building your paragon, right? So you'll just take whatever glyph is, like, really strong for you at the moment. I know there's, like, a werewolf one specifically that I have later. So moving on over here, I've got storm skills deal increased critical strike damage against vulnerable or immobilized enemies. So keeping up that vuln is key. This section, I like to uh, take everything because you've got vulnerability damage, which is a multiplier. And then down over here, you actually have attack speed, which is really big as well. I also need to drop these max spirit notes because our spirit is like out of control. Then moving on forward, uh, coming over here, we actually have ancestral guidance, which gives us anytime we spend 75 spirit, which is triggering constantly, right? We deal 30% increased damage, which is a multiplier. Then coming on over here, I've got my last, last glyph that I just finally hit 15 with, uh, which is increased damage while in werewolf form and gives us damage reduction. So this is really the one glyph that I would want to replace. And in fact, let me see what else I could replace this with right now. So uh, let's see, we're not a werebear. Um, damage while fortified is a little... It, once we get more CDR, this will be a lot better. 
Uh, what else? Nature magic skills deal increased damage to crowd controlled enemies or vulnerable. That's not bad because vulnerable enemies happens all the time. That's another option. Um, poisoning effects have a 10% chance to deal double. That doesn't matter for us. Every five int overpower is whatever. Uh, while in werewolf or werebear form, close enemies take increased damage from you. This is actually pretty, pretty good as well. It buffs magic nodes, so this is not a bad one. What else do we have here? Do -do -do -do. We don't really shapeshift. We don't have a barrier right now. Uh, we don't use that. This is another one, which is basically scaling crit damage, but I don't think crit damage is very good to scale because Grizzly gives us crazy amounts of crit damage, but critical strikes increase the damage the enemy takes up to 12%. It's pretty good as well. You gain damage reduction against close enemies. This actually might be the next one because you'll get a lot of increase from this, from the deck scaling, and then you get DR against close enemies. So this actually might be what I use instead of the other glyph yep and that's pretty much all i got so hope you guys enjoyed the character i'm unfortunately not going to be here over the weekend so i'll probably push out the next update for this character either tomorrow if i get a bunch of gear or on monday so that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves uh, if you did please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv box see you guys all tomorrow